On July 31st, Elon Musk tweeted that full self-driving version 9 was a complete rewrite of the software, and it was very impressive how well it had done, but that version 9.2 would be much tighter. What does this mean, and why is software problematic when you rewrite it? Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I wanted to do a real quick episode and talk about this tweet, but first I'm going to, of course, read the tweet itself. So again, on July 31st, Elon Musk tweeted, there is always a lot of cleanup after a major code release. Beta 9.2 will be tight. Still some fundamentals to solve for beta 10, but now that we're pure vision, progress is much faster. Radar was holding us back. So of course, as most of you know, version nine is the software that's been released to the lucky few who are out there beta testing it right now. And that is a complete rewrite of the software stack, even from version eight. So it doesn't use radar anymore. So there's no more sensor fusion issues. And I've done several episodes on that up here. So you can check those out if you're interested. But basically what's going on is that there were problems between the way that radar worked and what it was giving to the car in terms of like feedback for the car or sensor data for the car and what vision gives to the car. And by being able to replace the radar completely with vision, Tesla is able to produce sort of pseudo radar and pseudo LIDAR from just vision systems alone. And this gets rid of a lot of problems because what's called sensor fusion is a big issue. So sensor fusion is a problem in the sense that Radar, for example, if it bounces off of something like a large flat object, for example, a road sign on the highway or a bridge or something, that is an entity that the car should not pay attention to, right? It's, it's a bridge. <laughs> it should ignore a bridge as it drives under the bridge, or it should ignore a road sign also. But what happens is the radar is not very sensitive to direction, so it bounces off of this and it comes back, and there's a very large reflection of the radar signal back to the car. And that causes the car to want to brake, which is the source of a lot of phantom braking that happens, not just with Teslas, but with other cars as well. And then what you have is you have the vision system, which is much more capable because it's able to look around and say like, there's nothing going on on the road, that's a bridge and so forth. And so what you have is you have this fusion and over a period of time, they kind of fight with each other and one of them becomes dominant and one sort of answers the question and says, yes, this is what we should be doing. And that's why when you get phantom braking issues, a lot of times it's only temporary. So the car will brake, but it won't come to a complete stop on the highway. It will just slow down for a period period of time, then the vision system says like, yo, this is not right. There's nothing in the way, so ignore that. And so what Elon Musk is talking about and what's so important is that they, by getting rid of radar, they're getting rid of this sensor fusion issue. Now, of course, there's the problem if you don't do this right of not getting information you really need because you need to have that radar bouncing off of cars in front of you if it's a you know dumb system. It needs to be able to get that in order. It's really good at detecting distances. So if you're traveling behind another car at the same speed, so like 100 kilometers an hour or something, and you're both going relatively the same speed, it's exceptionally good at keeping distances because the radar Doppler shifts off the car. And so if you get a Doppler shift that's telling you it starts to go up in frequency, that means the car is getting closer to you or that there's a differential velocity in the negative direction, and that means the car should slow down. Whereas if the Doppler shifts you know, longer wavelengths, the frequency lowers, that means the car is getting away from you, and so you can increase your speed up to whatever the maximum speed is. So all of that stuff works really, really well with radar, but it has problems and it definitely has problems with vision and it's basically stupid. <laughs> it's really good if you're following a car and you're both driving basically the same speed. If the car in front of you stops really rapidly or if there's something just dead stopped in the road, oftentimes the radar will not see that as an obstacle or it will see things like bridges and stuff as obstacles. So it has problems with that because its resolution is not that good. And Andre Carpathy talked about this in CVPR21, and I've done videos on that if you haven't seen those, so definitely check those out. But basically, by getting rid of radar, you don't have those problems anymore. Now, what is the downside to that? Well, the downside is pretty obvious. If you don't have radar, you don't have a predetermined way of determining how far away. It's very straightforward to determine if you're driving at the same speed as another object in front of you, how far behind you are using basic radar Doppler shifting. You don't get that with a pure vision system, so you have to reinvent that. So essentially what they had to do is they had to use neural networks with radar as a ground truth and train them up to be able to see these cars and to understand what is going on using radar data as ground truth data 
but they have trained the system up at this point so that the visual system works as well as the radar and you don't have sensor fusion issues. So that is the huge, huge difference between all the versions of the software that we currently drive, the old beta software that was version 8.x that people were driving in beta form, and this version 9 that is brand new. And that's why this version is just massively important. And again, you know, I'm not a stock analyst, do your own research. This is, you know, only what I'm thinking about, but this is going to have a really big impact on Tesla stock prices and people just don't understand this yet. The wider market just doesn't understand this. This is huge that the software is working as well as the older software with the radar, without the radar. But what I get is that a lot of people seem to be rather disappointed with version nine of the software because Elon has a way of hyping things up and you know, that's fine. It's his personality. He's very optimistic and you know, effusive about things. Uh, but what I think he did was he maybe perhaps overpromised slightly and said, this is the best thing since sliced bread. And as an engineer and as a coder, he understands and I understand what is going on here and why it's so important and why it's so amazing. But I think the general public goes like, I didn't see this quantum leap between version eight of the software and version nine of the software. It seems more or less the same, but that's the amazing thing about this. And that's what Elon Musk was really talking about in this tweet. So first of all, what he said is he said, after a software release, there's always cleanup. So what he means is that essentially this isn't version nine, this is actually version 1.0 of full self driving version or something, right? <laughs> so it's version 1.0 software. It's really, really brand new. Now it shares a lot of commonalities with the old stuff, but anyway, well, however you want to talk about it, it's better to think about this as new software. And generally new software, like if you think of a version 1.0 of some software, like, I don't know, take Microsoft Word, I'm old enough to remember. Microsoft Word version basically 1.0 back on the original Macintosh in like 1984. It is nothing like the current version of Microsoft Word, right? That that version of it was very, very primitive and it you know only had a minimal amount of functionality. And over the decades, it has become much more functional and a much more robust and big program. So what's going on here is if you think about this full self-driving software, you've got another version of the software that has existed for a decade or so that's been worked on and refined and all of this stuff. And it's been polished up as best as it could. So it's kind of later stage development software, but it had a lot of functionality. This new software, yes, it shares some of the same stuff as the old one, but it's basically brand new. And the fact that it works as well as it does is incredible, right? If you go back to a version one of a software package, it's generally gonna have a lot of bugs, it's not gonna work that well, and it's going to take a while for it to ramp up and get better. So that is absolutely amazing, it works as well as it does, but here's the more amazing part, right? So Elon's saying version 9.2 is gonna be really tight, which means that it's gonna have a lot less problems. But the big, big thing is when he starts talking about version 10 of this software and into the future, because the downside of writing new software from scratch is that you've got you know, problems and it has, it's, you know, it has issues with it when it first comes out, but the advantage is you've got massive headroom. Right, so again, take Microsoft Word just as a kind of analogy. The original version of Microsoft Word in the early 1980s had huge room to grow. But now when you think about like Microsoft Word version 2020 versus 2021 or something, the, the, the differences are pretty darn minimal now, right? So what happens is the early stage software development, you have this massive, massive capability to make huge changes and advance very, very rapidly. Whereas the later the stage of it gets, the less the headroom you have in terms of development. And this is the part that's amazing to me, is that we've got early, early stage development software here that has huge headroom to grow, and it's functioning as well as the old, fairly mature, fairly polished software was. And that, my friends, is something to be incredibly excited about, because that means that, you know, at, during the last decade, there was a lot of progress made, but a lot of it was made, and then there was kind of a slowing down of that progress over time. But what that means is that we're just about to be able to make a gigantic leap in terms of the quality. So version nine of the software is probably gonna be pretty good, but version 10 is probably gonna be really good. And version you know 11 or whatever comes next is going to be outstandingly good. So those kinds of steps are going to be able to be taken very, very rapidly instead of much more slowly. So this is all stuff to get super excited about. And again, I really don't think that the wider market has a clue what's going on with this. So if you're a Tesla stock investor, this is also something to get excited about. All right, I hope you found this episode fun and enjoyable. If you 
you did, definitely like it so YouTube's AI knows you like it. And also consider subscribing for more of this. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for the help. I really do appreciate it. If you're interested in joining the club, definitely check out the link in the description. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And don't forget about our merch store, which now has physics is the law, everything else is a recommendation, which is a quote by Elon Musk, as well as other t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, etc, etc. Check it out in the description. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking a link and going shopping for a car, a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is Dr. Know It All Knows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye bye.